All right. So hopefully you guys are getting a good feel for why the structure of Plan Swift or in Plan Swift is important. Uh, we're going to look at parts, uh, labor, material, equipment. Uh, I'm going to add a couple of these. Uh, I'm just going to paste them in. No, we don't need to do that. Okay. And then what we want to do is let's go ahead and name these part A. A. And let's make this four bucks a piece. Let's name this part B. And we'll make that 10 bucks a piece. And why don't we make the quantity three per count? And then this guy here, let's go ahead and uh, let's call it part C. And one count, but why don't we uh, go 1.1? 1 .1. We're going to do something fun. And let's make this 200 bucks. Okay. So you can see um, as I did this, the prices changed. Okay. Uh, so because in the materials assembly, um, here's all those part A, part B, part C, the quantities, things like that. But because we have these I sum or the sum totals for cost, it's going to add that up into the assembly level. Okay, so this is all those parts and pieces are now 254 bucks. If you want to see what the uh, price total is with markup, it's 398 bucks. And we're going to look at why that works within the parts. Okay, just want you to see that um, we are adding up all these parts here in materials. Okay, so we're, let's look at, at the advanced properties. Okay, I've created this. Um, so that I could have multiple parts. Now, I'm a firm believer in databases. We're not going to cover that in these videos. I've got other videos for that. So right now we're just going to use manual entries. Um, whatever I name this is what I'm going to name it. It can be um, a plant tab. It could be a nut or a bolt or a gasket. Who cares? And then you have the quantity. Every time you count, you want to make sure you have a quantity and a cost each. So let's look at what I have here in properties. Okay, so I've got these check boxes and those are the ones you saw. We have cost each. We have quantity per count. So if it was two bolts for every count, we would put a two there. And these things are not built into plans with, so you would have to build them. I put in a vendor, um, just in case I wanna have a, 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 a list. We'll cover lists later, but for all my vendors, I could choose it and then do a vendor report and say, hey, everything on this report, I want you to shop or buy or send. <laughs> okay. Um, it is a material part. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking the quantity, which is from that grandparent clause, times the quantity per count. Okay. So right now we just have one count, but if I said quantity per count here, uh, one, let's go two not to confuse, we would have two of those, okay? Um, I like material and vendor classes. Generally, I set this with a database, but let's say you wanna have all your aggregate together in one uh, report. If you assign a vendor class, then you can say, okay, aggregate, or electrical supply, or uh, pipe, or asphalt, or paint, or whatever your, your vendor uh, type of vendors you have, then Within that, you can have sub or material classes. So like in, in my case, ir irrigation would be a vendor class, irrigation or nursery or quarry or uh, bark, uh, things like that. But then a material class, like for irrigation, could be PVC pipe, drip pipe, sprinkler heads, things like that. So that when you shop this to the vendors, it'll organize, if you've, if you've done it properly, all your heads together, all your swing joints together, all your pipe together, all of your aggregate together you know things like that okay so these are things i like to include in that and they can, once we do that then we can not only put them in the report but we can sort by that so we can say hey i want to have a vendor class of irrigation okay so i'm bringing up all my irrigation parts and i want to separate it by material class and then but i don't want to see fitting so i can exclude that that's because we've built this into the system and you should do that the same for your your trade okay if you're a builder you can have uh, timber you can have plywood you could have roofing siding windows doors carpet whatever it is you cover 
Uh, so here we have that job material markup. That's that job property we're going to cover probably in the next video uh, real soon. I like to get into that because that really makes it easy where you can mark up your uh, material over the whole job with one, one item. Mark up your labor the same way. Uh, so, and then we have sales tax based on the job. And, and uh, yeah, um, that's kind of it. Now, I use these divisions. This is called a grandparent clause. I use that because when I set the uh, division at the takeoff property for landscape or whatever, it's going to carry down to not only the assemblies, but all the parts. So I could do a report. What is my division cost? And even do that in a proposal. So it's real important that you get these guys set up too if you're going to use divisions, cost codes, locations, things like that. And that's what you want to do as you build this. You test it. You build it. You go to the reports. After you counted your item, you check the math. And then you check the reports. Okay, can I do a proposal with this now that I have all my markup? Do I, you know, things like that. Um, you can see my markup each is going to be 57% on top of that. So uh, we have markup total of $4.56. That adds me a price each from not only our cost total, but our markup gives us $12.56. And that's information that's being sucked up by that uh, assembly that we saw where it's saying the sum of. <coughs> it's pulling all this information up, okay? So... And you can see my takeoff property is blah, 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 right there. Uh, you know, these are just really key, important things that I would really encourage you guys to build in there. Um, some of the stuff um, is already there. So if I had to go through and say what I added, uh, a lot of it would be this, the job cost material or the codes. Uh, for sure, some of the grandparent items, I've added these for five items to that and by the way you can take this when you're building your master parts and you can copy this and then you can go ahead into the next part and paste it into it okay um, so those are the shortcuts we'll kind of get into but for now let's go to labor and look at the same thing okay um, so I only have two things showing on that just so I keep my input window very clean uh, I have a number of man days. It takes the quantity or total crew hours is my quantity. Where did I get the total crew hours? From the takeoff property. That's a takeoff formula for total crew hours. How much am I charging? At the job property. Okay. Uh, what's my markup? That's another job property item that we're looking to the job property to grab. What's my taxable rate for that? None, because it is not taxable. If I said true, it would probably want to put a tax on there, but it's not taxable in wherever we work. All right. So, again, now we're going to go in and start building formulas, maybe even from scratch, and show you how a lot of the check boxes work, how the grandparent clauses work, how the sum totals work, how to get information from point A to point B to point B to your reports and be able to make it all match uh, your uh, your total estimate okay cool